and welcome back to my channel, Tora Athena, where today I'm doing something I haven't done for quite a few months, and it's a Q&A. Mainly because I am too lazy to think of doing an actual video. I actually have loads of ideas for videos I want to do, but I just haven't had the time to do it. And I'm sorry if I look quite extreme with my makeup or I just look run down and tired, because today I was actually acting in a movie like in an internet movie database credited film. A short film, but a film. I'm gonna be in a DVD. Ah! <laughs> really random story. Yesterday I was just home and then someone tagged me in a Facebook status saying, we urgently need an actress to play a barmaid. She has to be over 18. And I went, why not? And I, I messaged them saying, oh, I'll, I just wanna show you my interest. Um, I might not fit the type, but I'm used to talking to a camera. And they went, yeah, we'd love to have you on board. Come down tomorrow and we'll film with you. And we went down and it took four hours, three wardrobe changes, and one of them is in a corset. I have to try and be super sexy and flirt to the camera. And when I try and flirt in real life, I'm like, do you like bread? So I was really nervous about having to be like, the conventional sexy oozing charisma to a camera so I have no idea how it looks but they were happy with it and I'm gonna get a copy of it and I cannot wait to see it I'm really excited the movie is called confidence if you want to check it out on Facebook and that's as much as I can tell you I've yet to see what the rest of the film looks like but I will be watching it when it comes out and I will cringe when I see me there <laughs> That's enough for plugging of Lucy's weird adventures for this weekend. Shall we get on with the Q&A? First off, I just want to say thank you to everyone who asked me a question. I only put this up the other night, so it's only been up for like 24 hours. And I was really, really worried no one would ask questions. And you did. And I got loads of questions and hopefully it'll be enough for a video. And so thank you so much to everyone who asked me a question. You make my YouTube life so much easier. Just wet my whistle. Johnny Judd's 19LF, I think this is on Instagram, said, if you could choose any favorite childhood video game to get a modern day reboot, which would it be? Ooh, that's a good question. There are so many games that I played as a child and then so many I can remember as well working in a retro video game shop. They constantly come to life and remind me of what I used to play. Uh, so that is a tough one. Uh, straight away I'd say Fable because, and I mean like in, in the straw, like the most literal sense Fable, not Fable 2 or Fable 3. Fable 2 was the closest to it, it being rebooted, but it wasn't Fable. I obsess over Fable. It's one of the few games that I play over and over and over and over again. And I love it. Everything down to the movement, the controls, the fighting system is so satisfying. Everything is perfect. The only thing about the game, it looks unfinished. There are certain places in the map you can't go to that look like you should be able to, even with the expansion pack, lost chapters, it still is a bit incomplete. I think it, they could remake that again with the controls being as smooth as they were in the first game and the fighting combat system to be as satisfying as it was in the first game. Because personally, I think they messed both up in Fable 2. And let's not even talk about Fable 3. I'd be so happy. Spyro would be awesome. I went to start playing Spyro in my Let's Plays on my gaming channel and that is still awesome and you get very quickly used to the graphics but I think a more sharper version of that game would be perfect. They've just recently done an incredible version of Resident Evil on the PS4. I think it's doable. I think you could make a really good rebooted Spyro. Kyle Dean on Twitter said, can you remember the first album you ever bought? Yes, I can! I was about 14 and I went to Music Zone. It doesn't even exist anymore. And I bought three albums actually, and they cost me a tenner altogether. They cost me £10. And uh, it was White Snake. Uh, Def Leppard, or oh, was it Puddle of Mud? I think it was actually Def Leppard, Puddle of Mud, and Hooberstank. And uh, I still love all of them albums. I was actually listening to Hooberstank last night, complaining how the next album, The Reason, was nowhere near as good. Uh, yeah, so they were my first three albums. <laughs> Asteroid underscore mmm on Instagram said, Whose side are you on, Captain America or Iron Man? This is a tough one because at the moment are you asking me whether or which side I'm on on the comic book side or on the movie side. In the comic books it was really really cleverly written as everyone knows it's one of my favourite graphic novels, one of my favourite stories, it's why I'm so protective over it and why I'm not that excited about 
Captain America 3 Civil War. In the book, I constantly changed my mind. I constantly thought heroes should be allowed to do what they need to do. And then another page makes me go, hang on, no, they should be held accountable for their actions. That's why it's such a good story. You constantly don't know where you stand and you can see both sides of each side. I think at the end of the day, I was still Team Stark in the book. And I definitely, definitely, definitely am in the movie version because of uh, judging by the trailers, Captain America is just being a little bitch. He just wants to play with his friend Bucky and has no thoughts or feelings towards anybody else. They just need to go away, live their lives happily together, go and marry each other and leave everybody alone. That's my thoughts. John T. Sparrow on Facebook, who is also uh, Geekism Gaming, check them out. They are the reason I'm on YouTube said, can you see your videos ever being a full-time career? Do you ever have a milestone in mind, revenue, views, or subs that you are aiming for? Jonty, that's a really good question. Uh, and honestly, I, I don't know. I would love, I, I do always think of this. I always kind of go into my own little head and fantasize about how successful I could be on YouTube. Not saying I'm good enough to be successful, but like when you pretend to win the lottery, like what would you do if you win the lottery? I think about what I would do if I became super successful on YouTube. If I could make it to a full-time career, I constantly question would I? Because my shop is my baby. One of the main reasons I started to do YouTube was to advertise my shop. So I don't know. I know I have a lot of material and content ideas that if I became successful enough to do it full time, I would be able to make a very good content filled channel. But I don't honestly think I would ever get there. I think in the world of YouTube these days, it's so saturated um, that to become successful enough to be full time these days, I don't think that's entirely possible. But at the end of the day, that's not my aim. My realistic aim in regards to subs is honestly as many as I can get. The more I can get, the more I am advertising my store, the more it helps me get press passes and conventions, and the more people that are watching me. The money genuinely is the last thing I'm thinking of with YouTube. Although, when that actually happens, that will be a nice bonus. Kane's Corner on Twitter said, What's the strangest thing someone has tried to trade in at Level Up? This is a really good question. I can't remember what the weirdest thing is. I have had people come in and try to like sell me vinyls or people who just go around the, like, the, the building that houses my store trying to sell whatever they have. Possibly one of the funniest trade-in stories that I have, but maybe that's just because it's one of the most recent that it's stuck in mind. Someone rang up once and they had the Scouse's accent. And sometimes people can be so Scouse, I even struggle to hear them. And they said, would you like to buy a bucket of sick? And I went, what? Thinking it was a prank. And they went, yeah, yeah, it's a book. Do you want to buy it? It's a Star Wars book. And I was like, what? Okay, yeah, bring it in, I'll have a look. And I was trying to Google Star Wars bucket of sick. And, and the images that I was finding were not nice. And I was like, I don't know what he's bringing in. This is ridiculous. He was bringing in the Star Wars Book of Sith Vault. The one that's like a pyramid and you press a button and the door opens up. Yeah, that's what he was bringing in. <laughs> I felt so bad because I was quite rude to him on the phone as well because I thought it was a, like a, a, a prank. I felt awful and he was actually a really nice guy. I felt terrible. Dan Burgess on Facebook said, if you could see a film made of any comic book character that they've not done yet or they've done badly, who would it be? Hands down, She-Hulk. I love her. She's a babe. She was actually the first person to break the fourth wall, not Deadpool, and she's brilliant. In volume two, issue one of She-Hulk, when they redid it, that actually might not be the right issue number, but it was definitely in a She-Hulk comic. And it's got the first page is her skipping in a bikini, and she's talking to the audience, and she goes, I'm a, I'm a lawyer. I have a degree. I'm really smart and I have superpowers, but I know my market and you apparently just want to see me here skipping in a bikini for eight pages. So here it is. And that's what she does. She skips for eight pages with a skipping rope in a bikini. And I just love that. I just think that's so funny. And then on the first, on the cover of volume two, issue one, she goes, look, I'm back. And I know you didn't buy the first one, but please buy this or I'll come and find you and kill you. And <laughs> I am paraphrasing that. That's not literally what she said, but it's definitely along them lines. And that made me howl. It makes me love her. She's brilliant. And oh yeah, she's green. I love green. And I also love Howard the Duck, but even though that's a bad film, it's so bad, it's brilliant. So nobody touch Howard the Duck. Tim Holmes, 1989 says on Instagram, 
as you own your own amazing store, Aww. would you recommend others to take the chance and stop what they're doing to start their own business like yourself? That's an incredibly heartfelt and severely heavy question to ask me. I really think I should do a story time or a draw my life on how I started my business because it was stupidly lucky. Bullet points, I had depression, I used to work in game and kind of went fuck it. I was meant to go to uni, didn't go to uni because you, you go to uni to get your dream job and I had the chance to have a dream job here. I'm not gonna go into the details of how I built it up the opportunity to get it but there was a moment in my life where I was at a cross in the roads, a fork in the roads, and I had to make a choice. University degree and potentially a job of my dreams or start this now and potentially have a job of my dreams. I, we all know which one I picked. I picked the shop. And the only thing I'll say to you is, I think life's too short to ever do anything that doesn't make you 100% happy. When I take two days off work, I get restless and I miss it and I can't wait to go back to work. And if you are taking two days off work and you don't want to go to work the next day, then that needs to be fixed. Whether it's you find employment with someone else that just makes you happier or you bite the bullet and try and do something yourself. And if you fail, that's fine. My shop is not the first thing I've done. My shop is not the first thing I've tried. And there are things that I've done in my shop that I don't do anymore because they didn't work. You keep trying until something works. And then one day you will wake up and you will be happier. By no means am I the happiest I could be. And by no means am I not stressed. I'm more stressed now than I ever was when I was employed. But it's a different type of stress because I'm in control of my life more so than when I didn't have my shop and I would never trade it in for the world. I am poor, I am stressed, I am always tired, but for me, this is my life and I love it and I never take it for granted. So I hope in some way that helps. Also Tim and anybody else out there, if you ever need advice or help or just moral support about becoming self-employed, please feel free to message me. I'm always there to help people and I have done in the past. If you need advice on business plans, with getting loans, even locations, or even just anything about where to pick up cheap furniture fittings for a store, message me, ask away, I'm always here to help. Andy Jones on Facebook said, how big are your tits? Wait, what? No, that's what he said. <laughs> he's not a perv, he's a friend who's just trying to troll me. <laughs> Love you, Andy. But I'm gonna answer it anyway. Apparently they're quite big. I always forget what size they are, depending on what shop I am. They range from double D to E. I don't, I don't know, I haven't got fitted in ages. But they've always been there since I hit puberty at a very young age. And they've always been there. And I forget that they're quite big because I'm just used to them. Sometimes I look at them and I think they're quite small. And then, especially like today where I was wearing a corset, I was like, oh, this is boobalicious. I have boobs. <laughs> so yeah, quite big. <laughs> But yes, thank you so much for watching. You have no idea how much it means to me. You have no idea how much it means when you like and you comment and you subscribe. It makes my day, as I always say, but it just, it kind of makes my life. You make me so happy. Thank you. And I'll see you all around soon. Take care. Bye. Oh, and just a quick announcement. If you are attending Wales Comic Con at the end of this month, I will be there with a press pass for both days. So keep an eye out because I'll be filming and taking pictures and I'd love to meet you all. So I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.